Hey everyone, it's Carrie, and welcome back to a another video. And this is like the long awaited first market overview for the year. If you haven't been following my channel since the beginning, last year primarily did farmers markets every single weekend. I have market overviews for those videos too, if you want to scroll back on the channel and watch them. Granted, I was just like starting out, the quality is not that great, so you have to bear with me a little bit, but I have a lot of market overviews from last year. And then of course my market overview of my November market. After last year's market and just seeing about how my like everyday schedule works and just knowing my mindset, I ended up deciding this year to focus solely on larger markets, single days, maybe like two days. That way each month I can set aside like one or two days. That be like the market day. A lot easier for me to find people to assist me with taking care of my horses, my barn. And two, I tend to do a little bit better if I have like a set day making a ton of stuff opposed to when I was doing like weekly markets. I, for a little bit, I was actually doing two markets a week. I was doing a Monday market and then I was doing a Saturday market. It was really difficult to create a lot of stuff. I actually felt really stuck in a lot of ways because if I did sell anything, they were typically like turtles, bees, small things like that. So a lot of times because I had the market so close, the only thing I would be crocheting would be like that set thing. It was really difficult for me to kind of expand, try new patterns, push myself a little bit. So doing the market like once a month has been great in terms that I can try and push myself to try new things not get so stuck. Granted, I do have to spend like time making, you know, the same small things and things that sell really well, but the difference is that might be like one or two days out of 30 days, <laughs> opposed to like one or two days out of seven days every single week. So my plan going into this year is primarily just larger markets, definitely a lot more expensive I would say because I was extremely fortunate that my farmer's market was so cheap. Then there was times I was having to pay people to come take care of my horses every single weekend and by the time I factored it in this year I just decided like hey let's just do <laughs> one market a month. I've got so many other things I'm trying to do at the same time so it's just a little bit easier for me. This market was actually supposed to be Saturday. We were supposed to have like horrible weather Saturday. Friday, it rained a ton. And we actually got lucky though because we were supposed to have like five inches of rain. We only had like, I think two where I live, which is still a lot since we've had like six inches in the last week. It was supposed to be a horrible Saturday. So they went ahead and canceled the market and then moved it to the rain day, which was just like the next day over Sunday. They had already kind of planned for it. Then it like really didn't rain much Saturday. It was kind of like a misting type thing, which honestly probably was not bad for me just because my products really, you know, they shouldn't really get wet. I definitely think it's harder when you have to first of all move a date because, you know, a lot of people plan on like, that certain day and it was a Saturday. When you move it to Sunday, it's a little bit difficult just because I find that people don't always do as much stuff on Sundays if you go to church or whatnot. Then you're running into that and the timing was like not great in consideration for like if you had a church crowd because the time was 10 to two. So I definitely think that that kind of like didn't help the situation by any means because like I said, it was just like a weird time. Recently here, it has been super nice. It's been like 60s and 70s. If it's not raining, then it's like been pretty sunny, not like super windy or anything. Of course, that Sunday, the temps dropped. It was so windy, guys. Like, I can't even tell you how windy it was. I think we had like 25 mile per hour winds and I think the high was like 50 like most of the market it was like 40 it was so windy so it was so cold i will say i was very worried when i entered this market if i would even make my table back because of the fact that this really isn't like a big market i primarily chose this market because it was so close to my house it was like 10 minutes away it was an easy drive to do but i also had to keep in mind like it was more of a celebration for a company and they were having like vendors come in and there was a lot of people also there that were like insurance like you know it wasn't like a true art market so i definitely was worried i didn't know how many people would be there shop there definitely wasn't like a big crowd that was there to shop i was very lucky to have the people that i did have come and support me and everything but it was nowhere like a normal art craft market like 
like people weren't necessarily coming there to shop so i had a lot of concerns i guess you could say <laughs> i definitely would not do this market again just mainly because of the fact that it's not really a market. With that being said, it wasn't a bad market by any means. It's just not particularly a market that I want to do moving forward. This whole year is just kind of going to be about like trying new markets, trying new people, just because I've never fully actually done like a full year of markets. I haven't even been crocheting for a year yet. So this whole year is just like testing the waters, trying new people, all that type stuff. With that being said, I still have to say I was very lucky to make the money that I did make and I'm very thankful because my horse has had some expenses like I always want to tell people I'm so grateful for anyone who decides to support me whether it's by like watching my YouTube videos by buying my patterns by buying physical plushies because pretty much all of the money I make goes to paying for my horses and taking care of them so like yesterday Sloan got some like body work and stuff done just to make him feel better and so I took the money from the market and basically just like had to put it almost all to him so I always want to just say like I'm so thankful for people's support because you guys help me out so much with paying like for my horses and my bills and for keeping them happy like I don't do any type of like chiropractor none of that type stuff for myself but I am a firm believer like my horse gets it all done on like a regular basis like I want to treat him like he is like the best thing and like the king that he is I just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who ever supports me y'all are amazing it means so much like I'm blown away all the time so we're gonna go over what exactly I sold and I'll also tell you guys how much I sold it for depending on if I have a picture I will include it on the screen but I definitely know I do not have a picture for all these items if I have a picture I'll include it but you know if not imagine <laughs> so the first thing i sold which was pretty early on i think it was kind of like right when the market started i sold one of my bunnies that's holding a easter egg and i sold this one for 50. i had another one that was holding a carrot and they definitely attracted a lot of attention there were a lot of people at this market that were more interested in just like looking at things and actually buying things they got a lot of attention and then like my ducks with the little floaties got a lot of attention but nobody really wanted to pay the money which is totally fine. I just have a golden rule that once I start having to sew so many things on and once I get to a certain size of plushie, my prices pretty much go like straight to 50 and then they go up depending on how much I'm sewing, like the difficulty. So you'll see that like any like big items that I consider big where I have to start sewing, they're gonna go up on price. So I sold my bunny with the egg for 50. I sold one of my purple, I wanna say they're like baby bunnies or Barbie bunnies, I can't really remember. But I sold the purple one that had the dark purple bows and everything for 35, which was good because I think I mentioned this in the previous video. I used to have these bunnies and they never sold. So I was a little skeptical making them again. So I was happy that at least one of them sold because that gave me the idea that there was actual like interest in the pattern. The vast majority of the things they actually sold this market were new items, which was very interesting to see. <laughs> and just is letting me know like I need to make more of them. Like some things I only brought one of. So it was really good to see that and kind of have a new plan going into April. After that, I sold one of my possums for $12. I sold one of the mustard colored dogs for $25. I put collars on them after I did that video so I can't remember if it was the red or blue one. It was one of those. The dog pattern I'm starting to look for a new dog because it's not my favorite in the world and it's horrible to stand at markets and just constantly falls over and I'm just kind of like tired of it. So I'm looking for a new dog pattern. I'm going to keep those guys that I have right now and hopefully find something else before April or I'll just make my own because they are making me upset. <laughs> After that, I sold my Pegasus, which this was the first time I ever brought any type of Pegasus to the market and I sold it for 35. So I'm definitely considering making a few more Pegasus. It wasn't a difficult pattern. It definitely had a lot of sewing for, I would say like the size. So 35 seemed to be an all right number there's quite a bit of sewing compared to some of the other patterns that I 
have done that are kind of like in the unicorn pegasus range but that one sold so i was really happy about that i sold a steam gray for 20 and this is one of the ones that's from the free patterns that i had done that video on a little bit back so i sold it for 20 and this is another new one so i didn't really know what to expect going into this market i just bought four of them i definitely plan on making a few more stingrays i'm undecided if i'm gonna do that exact pattern or if i'm gonna try a different one i'm just gonna see kind of play it by ear and how i'm feeling when i actually have to make more <laughs> i sold one of my small little octopus and i can actually show you guys it was done in this burnett blanket baby blanket yarn and so i sold one of my octopus for ten dollars octopus is something that i'm planning on restocking i really didn't bring that many this market but i know going into the next couple markets that i should because octopus are my cheapest item that i have on the table for markets after that i sold my tech Tuxedo cat, which was new. I actually just made them like a week before the market. Then I sold my clownfish, which I only brought one of those two because I didn't really know how they would do. And I sold the tuxedo cat for 50 and I sold the clownfish for 18. I was not really confident on a price, but I just kind of threw that out there because it's not necessarily a difficult pattern, but there's a ton of color changes. So I ended up just going for 18 on it. I am definitely planning on making another cat. I am also definitely planning on making a few more clownfish but i'm also going to be making clownfish that have no safety eyes and just like something crocheted because that was definitely in a high demand this weekend was baby safe items it's funny because <laughs> that was like totally not what anybody wanted last year moving forward into my next market i'm definitely going to be remaking some of the things that i have baby safe because it definitely seemed to be highly requested this weekend in particular after that i sold one of the little mushroom pop-ups which same thing it was like the first time i ever had that it was good to see that and they're so easy to make i have so much premier parfait chunky in those colors that i don't even know why i bought it it's a great way to use it up so i'm gonna just be making a lot of mushrooms because i want to get rid of that yarn <laughs> after that i had my biggest sale of the day which was actually from somebody who's purchased from me before she had kind of texted me the day before and was like i'm gonna come to the market and i want to see what baby safe items you have and i was like none <laughs> so luckily when i got there i had like a turtle that i had crocheted or i had sewn like eyes on and i had one of my dragons was baby safe so i had enough to like scrape by but i didn't have the selection that i would have liked <laughs> So she ended up getting the baby safe dragon, the baby safe turtle, and then her son ended up getting the rooster that I made because he's purchased the mallard and the little chick or whatever. So they wanted to complete the trio. So I sold all those guys together for 98. So I do my turtles for 20, my chicks for 18. And then I priced the dragon at 60 because I didn't really know what to price it at. I don't know if I'm gonna price them a little higher. I need to to actually do a little bit of research on what people typically sell dragons for because i have another one that i'm making right now so i need to do a little bit of research onto what people actually price them at because i've got no idea and then my last four things that i ended up selling i ended up selling one of my mini sakura cows which is actually done for my own pattern so that was really exciting because i was like oh so many people looked at the cows a lot of people really gravitated towards the sky cloud sun cow type and then um a lot of my flower crown ones which i was not really surprised i was actually more surprised that they didn't sell, which I'm not complaining because I'm a sucker for one of mine that I did and I actually would really love to keep it. So like, I'm not complaining per se, but I did sell my mini Sakura one, which is good to know because I'm planning on making more mini cows. I think I've mentioned this before, but my intention for cows this year are to focus mainly on my mini cows and not so many big cows because I think it's a lot easier for somebody to spend like 30 or 35 dollars and 50 so that's kind of my plan is to make more mini cows but I did sell my cow for 35 I have heard from a few other people who have purchased the pattern before too that they have also sold their cows in the 30 to 35 range if anyone is 
also looking at selling some of their cows if you've made it for my pattern. It seems like 30 to 35 is good. I do my basic ones that don't have like flowers or anything on them for 30. And then I have like the ones that have flowers or a little bit more effort at 35. So then after that, I sold one of my jellyfish and this jellyfish was kid safe. It was the only like kid safe item I actually had left. <laughs> Besides legging frogs, I had a variety of leggy frogs that I had embroidered eyes on and like hand sewn and everything. She ended up getting the last jellyfish that I had and that one I sold for 20. Same thing, I didn't really know what because I hadn't beforehand really thought about the jellyfish. I do think I'm gonna make a few more of them and I do think if I make them again, I will go up on the price probably like 25 or something just because they do take a little bit more time than some of my $20 items because of all of the tentacles and stuff. I just kind of like had a blank moment and just threw out a number. Then the last two things I sold, I sold one of my strawberry bunnies that had the two colorway ears and then a little strawberry hat on it. I sold it for 25, same thing, not the biggest fan of the pattern. I will probably not be making more. My biggest thing is, is it's from the same person who made the dog. They try and make it as low so as possible. And sometimes the hardest thing is with these low so patterns is getting them to stand because they don't really have the support of like legs. So I find that they can be really top heavy. And even if I stuff them like just right, you have to like really massage the bottom of it and like make it stay. And if it's a windy day or if people are picking them up, they never stand up. I have my, I think two left over that will probably be the like end of me making that pattern, but it was still a good try and a good experience. And I always say just because a pattern doesn't work for me or I don't like a pattern, don't let that ever sway or persuade other people because everyone has different likes and everyone has different like wants in a pattern. It's just maybe not my cup of tea. I'm just happy I sold one of them. <laughs> so to end the day, I think this was pretty close to when I was packing up some girl had been on my tent earlier and she'd been looking at the hedgehogs but her mom was like no and you know all that fun stuff and so I think right before I started packing up she came back and ended up getting one of the hedgehogs she got the hedgehog that was mustard this is the color I'm working on another one right now but of course it's not done or anything but she got the one that's in this mustard color I sold my hedgehogs for 30 was skeptical about how much to charge for them because they are not the biggest thing but the back side of the hedgehog takes a long time this all of this is like you can see that you can't see anything through it <laughs> but it's all like a lot of chaining and a lot of um i can't say the word but it's p-i-c-o-t the picky cots i don't know how to say it, that whatever stitch so it does take quite a good deal of time i had them priced at 30 and was like i'm just gonna see what happens and then it ended up selling i guess i'm gonna keep it at 30 and see the next market see how it does but that was the last thing that i ended up selling all in all when everything was added up what i actually made from sales was $477, which was definitely good because I was really worried that I was like not even gonna cover my table. So once I got past my table, I was like, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> like I, I was like a weight was lifted off my chest. With that being said, it's by no means my best market. I've definitely had days at the farmer's market where I've hit this number. That was like a little bit, I was like, mm, I was kind of hoping for maybe a little bit more, but I can definitely pay for Sloan's uh, vet builds and stuff. So that's like a huge relief for me. But the table was quite expensive for a single day market that was only four hours. I also want to say if you're doing markets kind of where I'm at that are like actual markets that are like marketed and stuff, they are not cheap. <laughs> I see like a lot of people who can spend not that much on markets. It just doesn't happen in my way you know a lot of times like my one market I do that I've already paid for for April, it's $220 a day. This one was cheaper. This one was about 125. Granted, like I said, that is quite a lot for four hours, but I also did just sign up for three market dates at another venue 
that is 12 to 6, so 6 hours, and it is about $125, $150. So it's not the worst price ever, but it definitely was a little bit hard to swallow just because I also didn't realize that it wasn't really a market market. When I got there, I was kind of a little disappointed about that, but still, you know. So by the time I actually took out the market fee, it was about $352 that I actually made. Luckily, I was able to plan this market to where I did not have to have help come in because if I have to have help come in, then that's like another $70 on top of like expenses. So I was able to do the barn completely by myself. I just brought my horses in early. And then when I got home, I went straight to working to take care of them. So I luckily did not have that expense. I did get lunch but I cannot tell you how much it was because my mother came with me to help with the market and she paid for it. So probably if I took out the lunch, it would be like 300. I try to the best of my ability to pay my mother if she comes to the markets and helps, but I kind of was like, I'm so sorry, but I really need this money to pay for Sloan's bills. Heading into April, I'm really hoping my April market is better so I can double pay her for all of her help for this market and that market. It wasn't the worst market, it wasn't the best market. You live and you learn and that's all you can do really. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Look through my channel, I've got so many more videos and I'm getting a little bit more consistent on the posting. So I'll actually have like two or three videos up this week. So look forward to that because it's been a little bit since I've done something like that. <laughs> but I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.